first thing I notice when I wake up before I move or stretch or even open my eyes is pain. I pop my morning dose of ibuprofen, take my medications, rub on my pain cream, and with a lot of effort, I start my day. If I move or get up too quickly, my heart rate will spike and I'll go into presyncope or fully faint. The same thing happens if my arms are raised above my heart, like when I brush my teeth or get the stevia for my coffee out of the cupboard, or if I stand or walk for too long. It takes me about an hour on a good morning to get dressed, take care of my hygiene, and make my coffee. By the time I've done all of this, by the time I've fought my body every step of the way, I'm exhausted before I've done anything at all. I have classical-like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and autism all of which are closely linked to disorders with a very high comorbidity rate. The hypermobile subtype of Ehlers-Danlos, or HEDS, has had a huge spike in awareness in the last few years, and has gotten a lot of publicity on social media apps like TikTok. But it's still uncommon to meet people in real life who've heard of it, and I've never met anyone that had or had heard of my subtype in the real world. The hypermobile and classical subtype are the most common, with as many as one in every 3,100 people to 5,000 people affected by HEDS, although that number is likely much higher, and one in every 20,000 people to 40,000 people affected by CEDS. My subtype, CLEDS, is less than one in every one million people. This impacts every area of my life and my body. Since EDS is a connective tissue disorder, and connective tissue is what, well, connects your body parts to your other body parts, nothing in my body really works quite right. I require mobility aids, mostly a rollator and a wheelchair, to live my life. I don't tend to use them at home all the time, since when I'm inside my place or a friend's, I can usually sit down and rest whenever needed, and it's not as dangerous if I fall or faint as it would be outside. But I have to use them if I want to visit the world beyond the walls of my dorm, which many days I just can't. People treat you differently when you use mobility aids. It's not always or even usually malicious, but it makes people uncomfortable. It's different, and to some extent, I get it. People are worried they'll accidentally say something offensive or ignorant, or for me to think they're staring, so they don't talk to me or look at me. It's isolating. What's your name, pronouns, and your major? Oh, um... I'm Cass Kaprowski, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a film major. My name is Ivory Little, my pronouns are she, they, and my major is creative writing. Do you feel comfortable sharing what your disability slash disabilities are? Yeah, um, so, uh, I have ADHD and I'm on the autism spectrum, but I also have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Do you feel comfortable sharing what your disability slash disabilities are? Yes. Yeah, so currently I am dealing with chronic pain. I am half deaf. I deal with autism and I have a cleft palate. And I include the cleft palate because it is the reason I'm half deaf. It is also the reason why I've had three surgeries on my face because of restructuring my face and also just fragile teeth in general. There's a lot of other problems that come with having a cleft palate, but uh, that's that's the main thing of it. <laughs> what does a typical day of classes look like for you? Um, a typical day of also like in-person classes um, involve me dragging my feet to get out of bed because my symptoms are always like much worse in the mornings. Uh, usually, my typical classes involve uh, like getting up, getting ready for the day, going to class, uh, and then coming back, usually resting for an hour or two at least. And throwing together breakfast of any kind to make sure that my stomach is full because I have three different medications that I have to take in the mornings that require like a full stomach. I think 
permanent is that I do cancel some days because I uh, just can't make the walk to it and sometimes it's also due to struggles with the teacher or other classmates that kind of strained the relationship between teacher and student or student and student that make it so I just don't really want to go but uh, most days I just like get through it but uh, yeah some days it is definitely a struggle to get there. <laughs> I have to make sure that I leave at least 15 to 20 minutes early even though I only live less than a five minute walk away from class specifically in Lincoln Hall the arts building um, because the elevators are one there's like only there's two elevators but they're right next to each other um, and they're in like the back corner of the building and most of my classes are like on the second or third floor so if I don't leave <laughs> it's my emotional support cat goose um, if I don't leave super early, then I have to like run the risk of either being late to class because I have to wait for the really slow elevators that are in the back corner of the building or run the risk of like potentially passing out. But when I get to class and my heart's racing, <laughs> um, I have to make sure that my accessible furniture provided by the DRC, shout out to the DRC, um, is in its proper place and properly set up. If it's not, then I'm responsible for setting up my accessible equipment, which sometimes means um, like moving a very big, heavy sit-stand station um, onto my desk and potentially like moving multiple desks in order to like roll my chair to the desk where it's supposed to be. Um, not to mention the times that I really awkwardly have to ask my classmates to get out of my accessible furniture which is like so awkward and so uncomfortable. Then like multiple hours of sitting, laying, like napping, applying pain cream, taking pain medication, um, pushing fluids and electrolyte drinks, um, like after in-person classes to compensate for the spoons that it took to go to in-person classes um, and deal with all of that. What are some hidden challenges you face because of your disabilities? Uh, I think some hidden challenges I face would be the fact that I can't really go to crowded or loud events, both because it's overstimulating and also the fact that I just can't hear. I don't have directional hearing, nor do I have the ability to filter my hearing. So if something's loud and you're trying to talk to me, I'm just going to hear the loudest thing. And uh, this has led to a lot of strain between me and friends or family because it will be sometimes experimental where it'll be like is this loud enough is this not and um it's a bit difficult i think for me one of the biggest hidden challenges is my lack of energy i don't feel like people really understand what i mean when i say i can't go do something or i'm tired I think the other thing is that uh, it's extremely hard to communicate accommodations I have with teachers and faculty here. It's uh, led to a lot of strain between me and teachers because we'll just, I'll explain my accommodations very clearly. Sometimes it'll lead to them being perfectly accepting and sometimes they'll say things like I've been completely reasonable, I've been the most accommodating teacher ever, this is ridiculous, and things like this that make it hard to go to classes. Always needing extra information about what you're doing and not being able to just be like, oh yeah, let's go do that to whatever is proposed. Um, of having to think of, is it accessible? Will I physically be able to get there without causing pain or running the risk of passing out? And also like just like feeling like a burden. I think that like when you're disabled, it gets to a point of you feel like everybody has kind of gotten fatigued with your issues and your stuff that it's like you don't want to talk about what you're going through because you feel like everybody's already heard it so many times because it's something that you're constantly going through. I'm always sore, my muscles always ache, and 
when I say I need a rest day, I need to lay in bed, I don't mean I'm lazy and I don't feel like going to class or to work. I mean I need this. When I lay in bed all day, I'm not just on social media relaxing. I, I deal with so much guilt for not being able to do stuff. Everyone else my age seems to be able to just fine. Do you feel like PSU is accessible enough? Definitely not. No. <laughs> no. I feel like, to be honest, the accommodations I have are more so for like me to accommodate for the teachers. <laughs> Especially for a university that brags about its accessibility and claims it's one of the most accessible campuses. There's a lot of places on campus that aren't accessible. Uh, in the Smith Memorial Student Union, there's a stage near the tables where the food is at. And I was at an event there uh, a few, like two weeks ago, and I realized that the stage only has stairs. Uh, to get up to it. It was an open mic and I wasn't going to present anything, but I realized that even if I wanted to, I actually couldn't. I can get upstairs sometimes with help, but I, I couldn't that day. And there was no ramp, there was nothing, there was no way for me to get up there and there was no one to help me if I wanted to. I think abled people take for granted the ability to do multiple things in a day. For me, I can do one, maybe two bigger tasks that day, like go to class or go to work or clean. Um, and on bad days, what counts as a big task gets a lot smaller. It could be anything from washing my dishes to getting dressed or taking a shower. And that's stuff able people just don't have to think about. They don't have to plan out their errands and their chores with their classes and their work schedule and doctor's appointments trying to make sure you only have one or two things a day and that you have enough rest days that your body won't irreparably break down because you've pushed it too far and someone with as fragile a body as I have really can't do that safely. I have landed myself in the hospital because I was working too much and I wasn't taking care of my health or I was focusing too much on classes. And that's happened multiple times in the last year. I go to the hospital every two, three months and I'm usually kept for like two or three days. It's really inconvenient, but it's what has to happen because I have the audacity to want to take care of my own chores and do things for myself. Tackling everything on my own just isn't doable. And I cannot overstate how difficult it can be, especially on days where I'm flaring up and my symptoms are a lot worse, which, since Ehlers-Danlos is a progressive condition, is only going to be a more frequent and more serious problem as my life goes on. I get to wake up every day knowing that my body is in pain, always. And it will only ever get worse. My hardest days now are future me's best days, and that's a really tough reality to face. It's hard thinking about other people and how not everyone lives in constant pain all of the time, and sometimes I don't know what to do with that knowledge, and it is just overwhelming. But things are good. I'm happy. I love my life. And I'm grateful for what my body can do for me more than what it can't. I have help. I have a partner, wonderful friends, and my mobility aids, all of which give me the ability to lead a full and fulfilling life. I'm grateful for my rollator and for my wheelchair and for the people around me who make sure that for once, I'm not the only one fighting for myself and for my 